I'm Peter Block in Orlando at the ACC annual meeting for On the Scene, and with me is Gabriel Steg from Paris, France. Gabriel has just presented what is arguably, almost certainly, the most important trial of this meeting, the Odyssey trial. So Gabriel, tell me what the Odyssey trial was to start with very quickly so that everybody knows what we're talking about. And then let's get into this trial a little bit because there's a, been a little controversy about what this really means. So IDC outcomes tested whether adding to standard therapy, including high-intensity statin therapy, a PCSK9 inhibitor, alirocumab, in post-ACS patients would improve their morbidity and mortality. And to do so, we uh, randomized 18,924 patients from 57 countries who were more than 40 years of age, had a recent ACS with a median delay between the index ACS and randomization of 2.6 months, and who were not at goal for LDL cholesterol with an LDL above 70 milligrams per deciliter or for some other atherogenic lipoproteins despite maximal intensity statin therapy, which is really important. We truly maximize the statin therapy by giving them 40 to 80 of vetrovastatin or 20 to 40 of rosuvastatin. And we randomize them to receive alirocumab or placebo sub-Q every two weeks uh, in blinded fashion. We followed them up for a median 2.8 years, although 44% of the patients had a follow-up of three years or more. And the bottom line is simple. First, there was a 15% reduction in MACE, defined as CHD deaths, MI, ischemic stroke, or unstable angina, and using stringent criteria for unstable angina. The bonus finding is that there was a 15% lower all-cause mortality with a p-value of 0.026, but we, to be very transparent, we qualify this as nominal because we pre-specified a hierarchical statistical analysis in which it came after non-significant reductions. The second observation is we saw a more pronounced treatment effect in patients who started off with a higher baseline LDL above 100. In these patients, the magnitude of the reduction was greater, 24% reduction for MACE, 29% reduction for all-cause mortality. And finally and importantly, we were pleasantly surprised with the safety of the treatment, confirming previous reports from other trials. There was no excess in nuance and diabetes, cataracts, neurocognitive disorders, allergy, uh, intracranial hemorrhage. The only side effect that was more frequent was rare. It was local injection site reactions, 3.8% versus 2.1%. As you would expect. So let me ask you a couple of questions, Gabriel, because there's some important issues about this trial that are different than the four-year trial, for example, yes. which showed clearly that PCSK9 inhibition is a good thing, not in ACS patients. <clears throat> so the question is, you actually did not just give the patients the drug, you got them to a place where they needed to be and yes. then backed off. So how did that affect the outcome? So we targeted a range between 25 and 50 milligrams LDL for those patients who started off above 70 milligrams. So we really tr treated to target, literally. We didn't want them to be consistently below 15. If they were consistently below 15, we down titrated them. And if they were below 15 at the lowest dose, that meant we switched them to placebo, which happened in almost 8% of the cases. Now, maybe that may have hurt the efficacy of the trial. Maybe the trial would have been more efficacious if we hadn't done that. But on the other hand, maybe the safety would not have been as good. And importantly, the re real reason why we did this, apart from the safety, is we also wanted to be clinically relevant and mimic what would happen in real life. And we know that in real life, if you get an LDL in the teens, physicians are going to down titrate either the PCSK9 or the accompanying statins. We know that even with statins today, they're often down titrating the intensity of statin therapy at much higher levels. So we know that in routine clinical practice, this is what's going to happen. So, uh, Gabriel, on balance, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things about this trial, but on balance, you show a positive effect. So let me ask you the obvious clinical question. If you had an MI today, would you want to have a PCSK9 inhibitor, particularly if your LDL to start with was somewhere around 70? Yes or no? Definitely, if I could afford it. So I think that the only reason to not have this, the agent is cost. Because if we look at risk benefit, which is what we always do in medicine, we look at risk benefit, 
Here, it's all benefit and almost no risk. So the only concerns we have is we're in a cost conscious environment and we have to try who are the best candidates to whom we need to allocate our dollars or our euros. And these seems to be the higher risk patients who start off with the highest baseline LDL. But we, we did see benefit overall in the trial. And even patients who had a baseline LDL of less than 80 actually had a 16% uh, reduction in the primary endpoint. Thank you, Gabriel.